Let's also we'll bring on board then Tapan Singhal, MD and CEO at Bajaj Alliance uh, General Insurance, joining in on the show right now. Tapan, hi, morning. Uh, welcome to ET Now. Uh, Tapan, you know, the insurance sector currently is, you know, clearly in focus. We've seen that in the markets as well. We're seeing various regulatory measures taken by our IRDA to increase penetration or uh, to increase efficiency as well. Just wanted to understand what, according to you, are the key factors driving this kind of growth? So thank you, Nayandara, for having me on the show. Uh, if you look at the insurance sector in India, I think the growth for the next 10, 20 years will be there. Um, fundamentally, because it's still underpenetrated and the protection gap is huge. You know? So as the industry keeps on expanding, the growth will keep on happening on that basis. Now, the issue which we have to think through is that a lot of people don't see from that perspective, while at all forums, you talk of the upside of the economy, you know, right, from the stock market to the investment infrastructure. But the downside also is a big play. You know? We are aware that 4% of India's population goes below the poverty line because they don't have health um, you know, uh, cover or you know, accessibility to health infrastructure. Or when a calamity hits it, uh, then the particular region where the calamity hits goes below, you know, the economic growth because uh, the economic loss is about 14 to 15,000 crores, which is not covered, nor is any subsidy provided for that. Insurance plays a very big role in that. So uh, if government and the insurance industry comes together, then for the country, in terms of providing the downside for you know, uh, supporting that would be a huge thing. And that would lead to a huge spur of growth coming forward for the industry also and be good for the society also. I think that is what is the next step which I feel the industry should be happening now. Hmm. But tell me, where are the maximum, uh, uh, you know, uh, where is the maximum uh, traction really coming in from? Is it from the non-life segment? No, I think the life is also doing very good. If you look at the growth in the life sector, it's been phenomenal. Uh, Post-COVID, people realization that life is important was very clear there. In non-life, the dependency on automobile, on infrastructure in terms of the factories and on health is uh, very high and health growth has been uh, pretty good. Uh, I think we look at the post COVID. The automobile was a bit low because of obviously the uh, less of semiconductor chips and uh, less sale of vehicle. And the investment in infrastructure, investment in the way the factories have to come up, the capacity building is still taking time. And as that builds up, I think the growth will also happen there. So that would be broadly the way you look at growth happening in the sector. So since you're saying both life and non-life uh, is doing very well, uh, you know, there are reports suggesting that we will be able to see life insurance one soon be able to also sell health insurance policies. What is this going to mean for the sector? Is this also an important trigger for what we see in the stock markets? Could that be one of the reasons we've seen the stocks uh, so enthused? Yeah, so uh, if I look at, as I mentioned earlier also, the health penetration in India is still very low. No? If you look at the government health scheme that covers close to 40 crore citizens, the insurance industry schemes should be covering about 15, 20 crores. So a last segment of 60, 70 crore people who can afford health insurance are not yet covered. So my belief is that the more the merrier. The only thing is that it should open up for everybody. So if life is able to sell indemnity based, uh, the general insurance should be able to sell you know, the long-term basis and the health. So I think the opening up of health for everybody is what is the move which is going to benefit the industry is my belief. So it is not about just one segment being open for somebody. Whereas if the purpose is to increase penetration, it should be opening for everybody, which is a very positive and a good sign. Because if you have 70 crore Indians who are still to be insured, I think uh, the more we can open up uh, the sector, the better it would be. Okay opening up the sector more across the board is what you're saying. Um, you know, now just speaking a little bit specifically about Bajaj Alliance as well. Uh, there's been a lot of chatter around uh, premium hikes for reinsurers. For your premiums, will there be a hike? Yes, yeah, so there has been a reinsurance uh, market hardening happening. But if you look at Bajaj Alliance specifically, uh, for us, uh, the cost has not moved up for reinsurance. I think well-run companies uh, did not have that hardening of rates from reinsurers. I think companies which have been making losses, obviously they would have to face a run for that. Broadly, what was the COVID claim to your mind insurance sector has suffered with? So if you look at the health itself, it was 30,000 crore. Now, it's a very interesting question you ask. Now, and if you look at uh, when the COVID hit, 
every sector went to the ministry asking for relief. The insurance industry did not go. And the reality is 30,000 crores of loss just in terms of health uh, claims. When the industry makes a profit of 5,000 crores, it's like five or six years of industry profit got wiped out just by COVID claims. So I think that was a big hit and I'm very proud of the industry which I work in. It supported the cause and stood there in spite of five or six years straight wipeout of profits for the industry, but it was still there. Neither did it go asking for relief in terms of from the government or no, anybody else. It, uh, it stood there and it served the customers well. Has there been a change in terms of the total, I'm try trying to understand here, the total size both in non-life and also in health post-COVID because suddenly we've realized the importance of our life and our health and we know that medical costs are escalating. So has there been a big uptick because of COVID? Yeah, so if you look at and this again a very interesting phenomena, post any event, an uptick is very sharp, you know, and then it starts as normalizing off. So immediately after when the COVID uh, second wave, I think the uptake was very sharp. But now it's normalizing off. You look at the growth rates now, it is not as high as it was uh, just immediately after COVID. But still better than what it was before COVID. Why is that we've not seen any uh, increase in the total, uh, total uh, cost of insurance? My understanding is that the cost of insurance has not gone higher. Uh, is this largely because at higher level there is no acceptability or this is a combined decision taken by the industry? No, I think the industry always will have, has a lag. Uh, no? Even if the, the claims moves up, you will not see the cost moving up immediately. No? I think that's how the industry works, uh, works across the world. And even claims comes down also, the price falls does not happen immediately. There's always a lag. So I think the rates will move up over time. If the claim ratios don't improve, that would definitely happen. But there's a lag to it. And actually, the industry watches to see does it stabilize or not. Let's say now, currently, the industry, the biggest problem is inflation. Now, we don't realize, let's say in the non-life um, industry, inflation will hit claims everywhere. Uh, inflation, let's say in cement, steel, the moment you have a loss in any factory, uh, the cost of getting the factory up would be much higher. It's an indemnity-based issue. So you pay for uh, the restructuring of the factory. Automobile, no? the inflation will hit no, in terms of the increase of labor rates or parts or paints is going to hit. Or let's say health. Now you have a clear 20%, 25% hike because now the protocols have increased because of COVID. So inflation is there. So inflation is hitting everywhere in terms of claims. Now there's a lag in terms of where the price would catch up for it. But sooner or later it'll catch up because there'll be a stress in the balance sheets of companies because of the inflation uh, no, uh, loss which is happening uh, in terms of the loss ratio is moving up. So, But that'll be a lag. So right now you don't see it, but as time progresses, there may be an increase. Just to wrap it up with uh, one uh, final question, I look at the health insurance sector, two dozen players. I look at the life insurance sector, one and a half dozen players. Only four players are making money in both health and non-health. But there is no massive consolidation. Why is that? I mean, the sector has gone through a tr tr troubled time. Market share gains are going to the three, four large players. But the small players are still managing to survive. Yeah, see, it's a question of solvency. The way the uh, regulator looks at it is if you have solvency ratio with the regulator stipulates, which is over 150%, then it's fine, which means if the promoters are willing to pump in capital, you know, then consolidation should not happen. That is what the answer is. You know? The promoters, the moment they are not willing to pump in capital, then consolidation will happen because the combined issue goes below the stipulated combined issue, then the regulator steps in, you know, and then there is no option but consolidation will happen. So I think it's a question of how much capital is available and how long does it last you know, for this kind of uh, business model in which uh, losses are uh, piling up. And then you will see constantly happen. But as long as the promoters are ready to pump in capital, you will not see that happen. Tapan, great to have you today on ET Now. Thank you so much uh, for taking the time out and speaking with us and giving us the color on not just Bajaj Alliance, but the overall insurance sector as well. My honor, Nayan and Nikunj. Uh, great talking to you guys. Okay.